So one of the other things we do here at the park is we keep track of some of the species that live at Merchant's Mill Pond. Um, one in particular is the box turtle. So we're involved with something called the Box Turtle Connection. And it's an online database where we find box turtles and we'll track them, we'll take measurements of them, and we're able to just figure out how much they've grown over a time period and also see how far they've traveled. So today with me, I have a couple turtle shells. Um, I'm just gonna give an example of some of the things we do, some of the measurements we might take. So our data is all collected and put onto this sheet called the Turtle Capture Data Sheet. And when we find a box turtle, we're taking it from its environment, so it's important for us to measure um, the coordinates of where we exactly find it. We'll take that turtle temporarily, bring it over back to the visitor center, and we'll get some measurements of it. So the first thing we look for with the box turtle is we'll look at the scutes, the individual scutes. Those are just the individual sections of the shell. And if there's little uh, markings in them, that means that this turtle was captured once before and we have measured it. If there aren't, then that means this is a new turtle for us, one to add to our database. So if this turtle is not a recapture, if it's a new turtle, what we like to do is we'll give it an ID. So we'll go to the back of our sheet and what we did is we developed a number system for each of the scoots. They all have a, a named number. And the one we're up to at this moment is 293. So we'll find those labeled scoots, and then we'll give it a mark. To mark it, we use a file. It looks just like this. It's a triangular file. And then we just gently rub in a downward motion in the middle of that scoot until there's a little notch into the shell. Now, turtle shells are made of the same material as our fingernails, so it doesn't hurt the turtle when we mark them, um, just as long as we don't go too deep into the shell. The top of a turtle shell is called the carapace, and then the bottom is called the plastron. Box turtles are pretty cool because they have a hinge, and the hinge allows them to close themselves in, and that's kind of how they get their name, the box turtle, because they can close in like a box. So after we've properly marked the turtles, um, what we do is we make some measurements. So we'll take our uh, measurement here and we'll just get the length of the turtle shell. We'll get the width. And then we'll get the, the height at the hinge. So we find that hinge again and measure it up so we can get that height write this all down on our data, our data sheet here. Um, then we do want to get some information about um, what the weather conditions are for that day in particular where we found the turtle. Um, it is pretty common to find the box turtles coming out after a good rain during the summertime. So we do keep track of the air temperature, the sky index, so how many clouds are in the sky, and then also just um, the weather in general, if it's raining, if it's just misting out, or if it's a sunny day. Then we get a little bit more information about um, the mass of the turtle. We measure it, get its mass. Um, we take some photos. We use one of these grids here. Line up our turtle on our grid. Take some photos, which we'll put on the database as well. And then hopefully our turtles are cooperating and they're very active. So we can look at the face of the turtle. We can get the eye color. Um, and then we can determine possibly if it's a male or a female. So males are going to have more brightly colored turtle shells and brightly colored eyes and skin, and the females are going to be a little bit more pale colored. They're more likely to have brown eyes, and their shells are not going to be as domed either. Yeah, so once we get all this information, we'll put it on our database. It's an online website. The database is basically used for um, other locations throughout the state to be able to compare turtle populations and keep track of how many turtles they have and if that population is growing and, or if there's a decline in the box turtle population. They're not an endangered species, but they're more just a uh, species of interest for North Carolina state parks and other agencies throughout North Carolina. And that's the box turtle connection.